greetings today in this video session we are going to discuss about very important topic in this first module that is nothing but osi model so this is very very important topic and this topic is always or almost present in this question paper so whenever we are talking about network then this question will be there in that question paper so that is the reason why i told it is very very important topic and it is also very very essential or very very important topic should be known by each and every computer science students because even in interviews people will ask more question about this osi layer so listen carefully and understand the concept it is very very interesting topic and you have to learn thoroughly so as far as this o osi model or osi layer is concerned so it is a extended version of uh, uh, tcp ip protocol suit what we have discussed in previous session is nothing but tcp ip protocol suit it is a extended version of this tcp ip protocol suit so it is also called as open system interconnection so which is represented as osi layer and we have discussed the standardization is very very important to approve or accept by the people so here this osi layer is given standardization or it is developed in the international organization for standardization iso is given a standardization policy or it is accepted the osi layer what is the meaning of this so it is a renowned model so which is accepted from worldwide so and the standardization is given iso so sometimes it is also called iso osi model and here the standardization given for all the layers which is available in this osi architecture so here that is the reason why it is considered as that is a osi layer is considered as a valuable reference model which defines the language used for communication so whatever it may be the language or methodology which is adapted all the languages that can be compatible with this osi model what is the meaning of compatible right it is plug and play so any model will be com comfortable with this osi layer this architecture this uh, open system interconnect architecture will be compatible with any type of network so there are different types of uh, uh, network architecture so one is this osi layer or we can say tcp ip architecture and there is another uh, sna architecture is there right so different like that uh, different architecture is there all the architecture can be compatible that means assume that for understanding purpose i am saying one node the sender assume the sender is available in sna network and it wanted to communicate with this tcp ip or osi model it is possible that is the reason why it is considered as a renowned reference model for all type of languages or packages for making a communication so here each and every layer which is available in this osi architecture will provide its own services to the next layer the higher layer will shield the upper layer from the details implemented in the lower layer so the end user will contact only the application layer higher layer in the sense that the application layer then whatever the activity which is taking place underneath of this application layer there are seven layers available in osi architecture we are going to discuss and other six layers doesn't know what is the activity which is going on like that if suppose the next layer after application layer the next lower level layer is presentation layer what is the activity which is going on in presentation layer will not be known to other layers that is underneath layers in this way the services can be provided security or can be provided or can be shielded from the upper layer to the lower layer so here the open system interconnect appears to be a direct so that is the reason why i already told 
so we are thinking that the application layer of sender side is directly communicating with the application layer of receiver side it is not like that it has to follow some hierarchical model and through the direct connection is available only to the physical layer all other layers are doing independent activity the sender side layers will be performing independent activity the receiver side layers will be performing independent activity so that is the reason why it is a virtual what is the meaning of virtual it is a illusion or the user is imagine that there is a direct communication between the sender and receiver it is not like that and actual communication between adjacent layer take place on one computer only so one system alone will initiate only the physical layer alone is having a direct communication and other layers doesn't have direct communication between the sender and receiver side why this type of arrangement has been made the purpose is it has to simplify our design and implementation and testing so if any problem occurs we can easily identify the problem and we can test easily so that this type of layering mechanism has been identified i already told only the lowest layer that is a physical layer alone is having a direct communication with peer process peer process is peer group is nothing but the same group so for example your class members are called as peer group members why all are belong to certain class right the second year classes are peer group the first year classes or peer group the same group having same set of rules and regulation that has to be followed then it is called as a peer group members or peer process or peer system and here this is very very important so this is the osi layer architecture this architecture will consist of seven layers and it has to be always you remember whenever it is asked anyone about this osi layer always you start from physical layer and you have to reach the application layer the order should not be changed even in interview if you are changing the order then the people won't accept you have to start from physical layer and you have to reach at the application layer physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer and application layer right so i'll tell you the functionality of each and every layer so application layer the end user is requesting in this application layer what type of process it wanted to do so here it wanted to send some information to the destination machine and it may be in any format the data or message may be of any format so here the responsibility of the presentation layer is it has to give to the destination machine in a presentable manner so here the format conversion has to be taken care by this presentation layer so why we need this format conversion i will tell you later on when you are discussing in detail about the presentation layer i will tell you why we need this format conversion so this that is the responsibility of the presentation layer so when you give something to someone you have to present properly when i am asking you to tell you what are the layers which is present in that uh, osi model then you have to present in proper manner that is called presentation layer so the format identification is done by presentation layer and below that you will be having a session layer this session layer mainly focus for providing a security for your data so we wanted to encrypt for example the message is in the form of plain text and the session layer will take care of right converting this plain text into cipher text why we need to convert so this information will be transmitted through the network if the intruder or the unauthorized person sitting in the network if he try to access my data when he access he should not understand what is present in that that is the reason why we are converting plain text into cipher text for providing security for our data or for providing a uh, that is a communication or destination machine has to be synchronized for making a and checking process this session layer will be responsible 
and the, below that you will be having a transport layer the name itself from the name itself you can understand you are delivering the information from one system to another system by using two different protocol i already told one is a tcp control uh, protocol and another one is user datagram protocol based on the requirement of the user you either you can select a tcp or you can select the udp so here tcp will provide guaranteed service udp doesn't provide you guarantee service and then below that you will be having a network layer so where you will be having a internet protocol so which what it will do is the segments which is available the data which is available uh, or submitted by the transport layer will be divided into so many number of datagrams the entire information will be divided into so many number of datagram why it has been divided into so uh, datagrams or this datagram will consist of multiple number of packets why we are dividing the entire data into packet because we wanted to route the packet from source to destination this layer will take care of routing our packet to the destination so after dividing the segments into so many number of datagrams or packets here each packet will be added the source address and destination address why we are adding source and destination address with each uh, pro, uh, that is a packet the reason because each and every packet will find a different route to reach at the destination that is the responsibility routing will be the responsibility of network layer and then for for synchronizing whether the receiver is whether you are listening my words or not for that what i have to do in a direct communication or in the class what i will tell you right please keep mum listen to me what i am saying is it not that is called synchronization you are making or i am making the destination machine to be in a listen mode for that this data link layer will be used and after that the information will be converted as a what analog signal into digital signal that will be taken care by a physical layer the physical layer will convert analog signal into digital signal that is zeros and ones and then by using a physical medium right here it will communicate to the destination machine physical layer so only physical layer alone is having a direct contact so these are the layers which is available in a osi model so i already told what is peer to peer process so the same group i am sending one information from one process so what is the meaning of process here when you are accessing a internet what you are doing you will be creating a one window and you are accessing your mail you will be creating another window you are downloading something from the youtube so you are going to create another window and you are listening some music is it possible or not you can create a multiple window so each and every window is considered as a process or processes and the communication between one process that is sender process is making a communication with the receiver process so for example you are downloading some the uh, from the youtube so the downloaded information will be available in the same window or in different window it will be available in the same window how it is possible when you make a request you will be sending your request along with that while sending it will create a process id for your request and it will be handed over to the server the server will process your request so you are searching something in the youtube regarding osi layer so that osi layer will be identified and the server will respond to the user by using this process id so that you will be getting the information in the same window that is called peer to peer process communication and here higher layer communication must move down through the layers on device a over the device b and then back up through layers that is the reason why i told there is no direct communication between the layers of sender and layers of receiver except the physical layer so whenever you are requesting something it will be handed over to the application layer and then it has to come down to the physical layer that is application layer will hand over to presentation presentation to session session to transport transport to network network to data link and data link to physical 
So in this way only you can able to communicate. Each layer in the sending device adds its own information to the message it receives from the layer just above it and passes the whole package to the layer just below and transfer to the receiving device. I told whatever the request you are sending to the application layer will be formatted in the presentation layer. The entire information what you are requesting that will be handed over to the application layer will be again handed over to the presentation layer. There it will be formatted. Then it will be handed over to the session layer where if you want to provide a security for your data it will be done. Then from the session layer you will be hand overing to the transport layer. Like that here each and every layer will add its own functionality and then handed over to the layer which is available in underneath. So here you can see this you will be having a device A wanted to communicate with device B. So it has to process all these layers. The entire of seven layers is having a responsibility of this device A. Uh, the lay seven layers which is available in receiver destination side also involved in this process. So here seven to six I told application layer will hand over the information to presentation. So from seven it will be handed over to six. Six to five session. Session to transport five to four and transport to network four to three and network to data link three to two and data link to physical that is two to one. So here we know very well it is router. So router will have right the functionality of three layers are important for router, physical, data link and route, routing the packet. All other things are individually. Transport layer will have its own functionality. It will be doing in the sender side when it receives. For example, if you take session layer, I told you the information has to be converted from plain text to cipher text. The session layer will convert or encrypt the information so it has to call the encryption method when it received here this session layer of the receiver has to decrypt because it will be in the form of cipher cipher text so it is not readable one so we wanted to present to the upper layer in a readable format so what this session layer will do it will decrypt the information so decryption is nothing but it is a method which is used to convert cipher text into plain text like that each and every layer will be having its own functionality. So this is the basic interface between the layers and here the passing of data and the network information down through layers sending device back up through the layers at the receiving device is made possible by an interface between each pair of adjacent layer that is the thing as, uh, which I have told earlier. Each interface defines what information and services a layer must provide for the layer above it. Well defined interfaces and functions provide modularity to a network. Why we are saying it is a modularity? So each and every layer it is having its own functionality and that function is considered as a module. This is application module. This is presentation module. Like that each and every layer will be having its own functionality. So after completion of this module it has to do it has to do you cannot skip any module so here a project will consist of five modules what is the purpose of having five module dividing the larger project into smaller pieces so that multiple number of people will perform parallelly after completion of the entire module only we can say that the project is over is it not that is the reason why it is called modularity so here these layers are functioning based on modularity alone and here how this interfaces will be done I told that here each and every layer will be having a header so h7 h6 is representing is a header so why we need this header so from which machine we are receiving the information like the machine ID or here this machine may be available in one network this machine may be available in another network how this machine will understand who is sending and from which network so that we need a header. So each and every layer will be having a header and especially that the data link layer will have the trailer because we need to we are dividing the packets into so many number of frames. We cannot send entire packet as it is because without understanding the capability of the destination machine you cannot send entire packet I will tell you later on. 
right uh, uh, what is the problem will arise if you send entire data as it is why you are dividing into frames so each and every frame will have a trailer t2 to represent it is a second layer and here it is having a header and as well as each and every frame will be having a delimiter called header as well as the trailer and another important point here is here you will be having an actual data i told in physical layer the analog signal will be converted into digital right zeros and ones the actual message what we are forwarding will be converted into zeros and ones and here instead of header you are having some bits this bit is called as a synchronization bit so this bit will be transferred to the destination machine and this destination machine will receive the same bit sequence 010 is the bit sequence the same bit sequence has to be received if there is any change in the bit se sequence it will understand that there is a problem in transmission medium there is a error in transmission medium to get a error free information you are forwarding a synchronization bit before transmitting our actual data once these bit are received in the same sequence then the remaining data will be forwarded so this is the way in which the layers are connected in the interfaces so we'll see one by one the responsibility of the layer the physical layer is having a responsibility to coordinate the bits of information to transfer from sender to receiver i already told it will be converted as a zeros and ones so it deals with mechanical and electrical specification what is the meaning of mechanical it uses the transmission i already told physical layer alone is having a direct communication how it is possible it is possible by means of cables right the direct communication will be having a uh, link that will be established by means of cable that is the reason why it uses cable plugs pins all our routers or all, all are considered as a mechanical devices and it is also having a electrical as well as optical information so how we are receiving a information up to data link layer how we are receiving a information it will be in the form of analog signal in a physical layer only we are converting this analog signal into digital signal that is a zeros and ones and it is involved in modulation so converting from analog to digital and digital to analog will be done by using a modulator and we need to identify what is the single signal strength so what is the receiving capability and how much of voltage level has to be maintained and how many number of bit that is a uh, bits has to be forwarded for synchronizing one machine to another machine all these things has to be decided by using electro electrical or optical signals so here this physical layer will involve the interfaces of transmission medium of the devices that is a mechanical devices as well as electrical and optical communication devices it also define the procedure and functions that physical devices and interfaces have to perform for transmission to occurs so when you have these type of devices and you need to provide what is the activity of each and every physical device to make a transmission in a better way and here you can see i already told you will be receiving a data as a frames from the data link layer to physical layer so in physical layer it will be converted as a digital information that is nothing but zeros and ones and then only it will be forwarded to the destination and here these are the bit for making a synchronization between the sender physical layer to the destination physical layer if suppose in same sequence it is received then the system will identify that the data which is forwarded by the sender will be received as it is in the receiver side so for synchronization purpose this bit will be used the major responsibility of the physical layer is physical layer character physical characteristics of interface and media it define the characteristics of interface the connecting devices and transmission media it will identify the transmission media and how we can forward information to the destination and representation of bits 
I already told you will be getting as an analog signal, right? And that has to be converted into zeros and ones. That is called representation of bits. And another important thing is data rate. How many number of bit can send from source to destination? That has to be decided by the physical layer. That is data rate in which you are going to send information. And another important thing is I already told the synchronization bit. Sender and receiver must be synchronized at the bit level. That is sender and receiver clock must be synchronized. So without understanding whether the destination machine is ready or not, if we are sending a data, then it may be data loss occurs. To overcome this problem, you are sending this synchronization bit. So which is used to identify error as well as identify whether our destination machine is in a synchronized mode or not. These are the major responsibility of physical layer. The next layer is data link layer. The data link layer is responsible for hop to hop. Hop to hop means nothing but node to node communication. So node to node communication or node to node delivery is nothing but. So it is doesn't mean that the sender node to receiver node. So there may be a number of devices available in between. Why? If suppose we are using a wide area network and center is available in one network, destination is available in other, another network. There may be n number of routers, switches, links are available. Is it not? So those are also called as a node. Generally, the node to node delivery will be taken care by this data link layer. It transforms the physical layer, a raw transmission facility to the reliable link. So how it will identify how many number of intermediate nodes are available between sender and receiver and then based on that the delivery has to be done to the physical layer. Why it is needed? So without any uh, error it has to forward the data which is received. The data link layer is receiving information from a network layer. So it wanted to provide error free services to the network layer for that it is performing the hop to hop delivery it will be having it will divide the entire package into so many number of frames and it will attach the header and trailer with each and every frame and then it will forward it to the destination side so there is no direct contact between data link layer of sender side and data link layer of receiver side i already told only the physical layer alone is having a direct contact so the packets will be divided into so many number of frames and then it will be forwarded to the destination. Now what is the important duties that has to be done by this data link layer? The first one is framing. So here you will be receiving this data link layer is receiving data from which layer? It is receiving from network layer. So the packets will be divided into so many number of frames. That will be decided. That is the duty of the data link layer. The data link layer divides the stream of bits received from the network layer into manageable data unit called frame. That is the first thing. Divide into so many number of frames. And physical addressing. If the frames are to be distributed to different system on the network, the data link layer add a header to the frame to define the receiver or sender of the frame. So for example, if suppose you will be having a different packet has to be delivered to different machines, then the header has to include the address. Without address, how it can be delivered? So the physical address, that is a device address or a machine address has to be appended with this frame to deliver to the network. If the frame is intended for a system located outside the sender's network, then receiver address is the address of the connecting device that connect the network to the next one. Let us assume what is the meaning of this. So here, here this data link layer created a frame and here this frame wanted to be delivered to the system or device which is available in other network, not in the same network. That is the destination machine is not in the same network. It is available in another network. Then this data link layer having a responsibility to append the address of the device where it has to be delivered. 
so here if suppose you always remember whenever you are delivering any information to the device which is available or to the receiver who is available in some other network it will be routed through some router so the frame has to append to which router the information has to be delivered the frame has to be delivered to which router that router address has to be appended to the frame that will be identified by this data link layer whether this frame has to be delivered to the same network or if it is delivered to other network to which device it has to deliver what is the address of that particular device everything has to be identified by this data link layer so this is the duty of the data link layer and another important duty is flow control and error control so what is the meaning of flow control and error control the meaning of flow control is here the i already told flow control in the sense that i am sending a information the sender can able to send 10 bytes of information in a particular period of time but the receiver cannot able to receive the entire bytes it can able to receive only one byte for understanding purpose i am telling sender can have the capability to send 10 bytes but receiver can able to receive only one byte at a time so in that case what is the need of this flow control is it has to inform to the sender don't send 10 bytes of information at the same time because the receiver can have the capability to receive one byte at a time so you slice this 10 byte into 10 times that means you send first one byte then second one byte and then third like the 10 times you divide the 10 byte of information and then you send that is the mechanism behind flow control to adjust the speed between sender and receiver we need a flow control then another important responsibility of data link layer is it is having a error control why we need a error control to get a reliability what is the meaning of reliability whenever we are receiving a data the data should not contain any error then we can say that the data is a reliable one so if a person is frequently telling a lie will you believe that person will you call him as a reliable person no like that here whenever you are receiving a data the data should not contain any error then only we can say that it is a reliable data so this will be provided by this error control mechanism which is available in data link layer reliability is added to the physical layer by data link layer to detect and retransmit loss or damage frames so how we are sending a information right you are receiving a packet from the network layer to the data link layer the packets are divided into so many number of frames you are slicing the packet into frames and then you are sending the information how you are sending frame by frame if suppose the second frame is lost during the transmission so here the destination data link layer will identify and it will tell that i didn't receive the second frame then it has to retransmit or it is damaged it is received but it is damaged how we can identify it is damaged the synchronization bit is not same in that case we can identify that it is having a damaged one so in that case also we can ask the receiver to uh, sender to resend the packet so for those type of uh, thing that is identifying the error and to get the reliability this error control mechanism will be there in the case of data link layer and another important thing is if same packet is or same frame is transmitted more number of time it has to identify the duplicate packet and it has to remove right so because the duplicated packet will overload your system so when system is overloaded delay will increases so here the whenever the data link layer receive the frames it will check for duplication is the same duplication because how it is possible to check the header address so by using the address we can able to identify whether it is sending a same frame or a different frame 
then it can be if it is a duplication is there then it can be deleted so these are the responsibility of data link layer and another important responsibility is access control when two or more devices are connected in the same link it determines which device has a control over the link at a given time so how we can uh, identify for example assume that this system right is sending some information and here this router will receive this is system also sending some information to this system it is possible is it not so n system represent n system may be a sender or receiver both the system is sending information from here to this system so when the receiver here is the router so this router need to identify which package or which informations are received from the system d and which informations are received from system f right so here it has to de determine and based on the that the information received for example d is sending earlier so that d has to be delivered to the destination or it has to be delivered to n system a a first then it has to forward the information which is forwarded by f it has to be decided by this access control mechanism which is available in data link layer it has to segregate right which information is received from which users and how to deliver this information to the end system so these are the duties right what are the duties we have discussed framing physical addressing flow control error control and access control so these are the important duties that has to be taken care by this data link layer so here i told there may be n number of intermediate devices available between n system so for for example this system wanted to forward some information to this system how many number of devices are that 1 2 3 4 5 there are five intermediate devices and including totally seven devices are that this is one link and two routers totally three links are that two routers are there and two n system so here communication between a to here there is router it is considered as one hop and this router to this router is considered as another hop and this router to this router is considered as a another hop that is the reason why it is called as a hop to hop delivery or node to node delivery this is one node the router is also considered as a another node and the next layer is network layer so network layer is very very important layer in this osa model it is a, it is responsible for source to destination delivery of packet across multiple network it ensure that each packet get from its point of origin to the final destination so here all the segment which is received from transport layer will be divided into so many number of packets and here all the packets should be reach at the destination without any problem that is the responsibility of the network layer and it does not recognize any relationship between those packet why each and every packet will be considered as a independent packet that is the reason why it won't have any correlation between the packet so once it receive the packet right so here the message will be segment will be divided into so many packets and each packet will be embedded with source and destination address and after that it will be considered as a independent entity right so that is the reason why it won't make any relationship between the packet and here it is considered to be a separate message why we are making the packet as a independent one we do not know the packet use which route to travel at the destination so that we are making the packet as a independent one why we are appending source and destination address because each and every packet should know that who is the sender and who is the receiver because it is following a different route to reach at the destination so here it won't have any relationship between the packet and each packet will be considered as a independent one and here you can see the segments are received in the network layer 
the network layer will divide the information into packet and packets will be appended with h3 h3 represent this in third layer 3 represent third layer h represent header the header will consist of the source and destination address along with data then only it will be handed over to data link layer then what is the important functionality of this network layer logical addressing if a packet has to cross the network boundary then the header contains information of the logical address of sender and receiver so it is it has to embed or it has to perform a stamping along with data so the segments will be divided into packet so each packet will be embed the source and destination address that is called logical addressing then it has to route because we are considering the packet as an independent packet so here it has to perform a routing so i already told it is not necessary it has to follow the same path to reach at the destination that is the reason why always i am telling from coimbatore you can reach chennai in two way one is following a salem route and another one is following a trichy route so here some packet may follow salem route some packet may follow the trichy route so each and every packet will be considered as a different independent event or independent packets so here this routing will be placing very important route how to route the packet if salem route is heavily congested then that time the router will decide and it will forward the packet using trichy route right so that whether it will be in the other destination it will receive in the same order packet will be received in the same order 1 2 3 like that no first packet may arrive and the because of more congestion in the salem route second packet may be forwarded through salem route it may arrive late but third packet received so 1 3 is received after the two may be received that is the reason why after receiving entire packet it has to perform a reassembly what is the meaning of reassembly it has to sort in order then only it has to deliver to the end system here you can see that i told a different packet one route is this one let us assume that uh, here one node is there that is end system is there so to reach this end system either you can follow through d or you can follow f assume that g is one node which is available here right so g can be accessed via d as well as f so the router this router has to decide right whether we are follow going to follow this route and this route assume that this is salem route and this is trichy route here the g is nothing but the chennai right so this router has to decide whether we can send the packet through this link or through this link so what it will do if this route is heavily congested it will forward packet for first packet it is forwarding here at the time it identify that it is taking more time to reach so what it will do it will send the second packet here so here there is no congestion so the second packet will be delivered first to this g node so here two will be received first and then only first packet will receive so this type of thing has to be decided by the router that is called routing mechanism and since it is considered as a independent one each packet has to be collected and it has to be reassembled by the network the may that is here we have discussed there are two important functionality as far as network layer is concerned one is providing a logical addressing that is nothing but stamping and another one is providing a routing information so as far as this osi model is concerned what we have discussed what are all the layers which is available in the osi model and what is the responsibility of physical layer data link layer as well as network layer in this session thank you